into the Revenue Service IRS Tax News. What taxpayers should know when choosing a tax professional? Well, I would think looking at the history of the tax professional would be a good start. However, it is difficult with so much defamation and retconning of history casually going on these days. I mean, honestly, like they're even going after fictional characters from over like 40 years ago to retcon. Did you know that the Wikipedia, which is like the Star Wars Wikipedia thing, is even retconning Luke Skywalker as gay now? I hate it when I get my Schwartz twisted. Okay, maybe if I put my leg up on yours, you know, we can split apart like... Good, yeah. Ready. On three. One, two, three, go! What, what's that, Phil? Yes, Luke is totally gay. Yeah, I don't know, Phil. I mean, I mean, just because he whines for, for like the entire first three movies. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Doesn't necessarily make him gay, Phil. I'm just saying. Oh, I see. I see, Phil. He's... He's unquestionably gay because at the beginning, Luke had a blue lightsaber. And then at the end, he had a green one. And both those colors are part of the rainbow. So Luke is like totally gay. Yeah, but, but wait a second. All, all, all colors are, all colors are part of the rainbow, Phil. All color, like what, what was he supposed to do? Have like a black lightsaber? I mean, what, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to talk to you about this any longer, Phil. I'm just, anyways, don't get me wrong. It's not a big deal. Everyone could see this coming and Star Wars has been a complete mess for a long, long time. Ever since that galaxy got less and less far away from the gravitational pull of that giant woke mouse head. Star Wars now finding itself lodged into the mouse's huge left mouse ear. And you thought the Death Star was dangerous, but one must wonder, is this finally it for Star Wars? Has death finally inserted his rusty randy old nail into the cold corpse of a once great but clearly mentally sick Star Wars franchise? The proverbial death nail of wokeness. Honestly, what, why is it that the current generation always has to make the prior generation's heroes gay? I mean, I swear, like, my parents' generation loved cowboys. But my generation seemed to take every opportunity to present cowboys like that one dude from the YMCA. Maybe it's just a way for the new generation to struggle for independence. And I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Now let's see how well you handle it. Or something like that. I don't know. In any case. All the history retconning and defamation sure makes it difficult to get an accurate read on anybody to do business with, I'll tell you that. Before you die, there is something you should know about us, Lone Star. I am your father's, brother's, nephew's, cousin's former roommate. What's that make us? Absolutely nothing! And as for the movie makers, you have to ask, where are they getting these writers from? And why are they being paid millions of dollars to write crap when better scripts are being made every day by like YouTubers in their living rooms, earning nothing, driven by simply passion? Well, I guess everyone has a story in them. And for the current crew of Hollywood giant IP writers, that's where it should stay, dang it. A point possibly they already know, which is why they prefer stealing and destroying other people's stories. But whatever. At, at least I still have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. On to the news. This R2 unit has a bad motivator, look! It just isn't fair. Oh, Biggs is right. I'm never gonna get out of here. IRS Tax Tip 2023-19, February 14th, 2023. Many taxpayers turn to tax professionals to help them prepare their federal tax return. These taxpayers should choose their preparer with care choose wisely. While most tax return preparers provide quality service, unfortunately some are unreputable or even fraudulent. Taxpayers are ultimately responsible for all the information on their income tax return, regardless of who prepares their return. So let me give a, a little bit of a recap on this. 
Note that when you're looking for a tax preparation, if you're on the low income side of things, then you would still generally want some help with the preparation, possibly simply from tax software. Also note that if you're on the low income side of things, you might think that your income is so low that you don't need to file your tax return, which might be the case. But I would still check it out because you might have access to free software to do so. And there's still a, a lot of like low income tax credits, refundable tax credits, like an earned income tax credit and a child tax credit, for example, that might be applicable. So you might still get like a refund, which wouldn't really be a refund in that case. It would be kind of like a benefit type of program. And so you, so you probably want to look at that. And doing it by hand becomes quite complex, even on what used to be the easy tax returns, the low income tax returns side of things, because of these kind of refundable credits being quite complicated earned income tax credit, child tax credit, credits related to health care, for example, can be quite uh, confusing. So I would think you would at least want the software to help you out. You might be able to get access to free software, looking on the IRS website at the free file software and seeing if you can get access to that, making sure that you're picking a software, which will be a third party software that is attentive to your needs, such as your state tax return needs as well. As your income goes up, you might not be able to get access to the free software because your income will be higher. Your tax return now will get more complex, not because you're subject to the low income tax credits, like an earned income tax credit, because it will be phased out as your income goes up. But you have other things that will complicate your income. And usually you have more tax planning kind of scenarios because now you have cash flow, which could allow you to, to put your money in different areas, such as retirement accounts and whatnot that could I have a tax planning impact. Therefore, you would at least, I would think, still want to use tax software to prepare your tax return if your income is above the threshold to get access to the free software because you'd still want to, the added help that the software does provide. Or you might want to get advice from a tax professional, not simply for the immediate need of preparing the current tax return, but because now you have those tax planning needs. So you would like to hire someone that's gonna be there into the future to help you with the planning component and help you if there's any kind of audit type of situation that happens on out into the future. Also just realize that when you hire somebody, then it, people tend to think that the, that the person they're hiring is like part of the IRS or something, or like they have the liability, you've handed all the liability to the tax preparer, which is not the case. The, the tax preparer still gives their information on the return, but the IRS is primarily gonna go after you if there's something that's incorrect on the tax return. And so you want, you're hiring the tax preparer basically as an agent. So therefore you want to make sure that you're hiring someone that you have some faith in. How could you have faith in the tax preparer? Well, if it's the first one you, you're working with, you probably want to look at the history of the tax preparer, see how they're marketing. If they're marketing that they're going to give you a big refund or something like that, that's usually an indication that there might be more scammy kind of situation as opposed to, you know, we're going to, we're going to do the tax returns as best we can, get you as big a refund as we can in accordance with the law uh, kind of, kind of uh, uh, situation. And you want the tax re return preparer to be there, hopefully, uh, in the event that an audit happens, which could happen like three years or even further in some cases after the tax return has been prepared. Uh, so those are just, just a couple things to keep in mind when you're looking at credentials, then the three credentials, you got enrolled agents, you got CPAs, and you've got lawyers, for example, could represent you in front of the tax court and others possibly could do the preparation. If you have business information, like you have a sole proprietorship, or S corporation or something like that, then you might lean towards the CPA at that point, because they're usually the ones that have more accounting background that might be able to help you with, you know, the adjusting entries and tax entries to kind of shore up your books to have them be correct for uh, tax preparation. If you're, if you don't have a more complex business needs, then maybe the enrolled agent would be less expensive sometimes than some CPA firms, depending, this is just a general rule, depends where you go. And then lawyers usually specialize because they have a very broad kind of spectrum. And then they specialize, some might specialize in uh, law. If they do, it's usually in some special area like S corporation creation or something like that. Uh, and you know, there's a whole bunch of different areas, but it's usually a more complex kind of area. 
So you want to be a little bit careful on the, with them because they're going to cost more oftentimes. And that specialty is often something that they basically sell. <laughs> so you want to, so if you're going to, if you ask like a, like a, someone who, who does a business of creating S corporations, whether or not you should make your business into an S corporation, it shouldn't be surprising that most likely they're going to advise that they you to go to an S corporation. Doesn't necessarily make them make it wrong, but just be careful when you go to a very specialized area and ask a question like, do I need your specialized service? Because odds are, you know, they want to pick up a client. So they're, they're not exactly independent in those situations sometimes. Okay, so taxpayers can review these IRS resources when choosing their tax preparer. So the Choosing a Tax Professional page, there's a link to that here on irs.gov, has information about tax return preparer credentials and qualifications. So the IRS Directory of Federal Tax Return Preparers with Credentials and Select Qualifications, there's a link to that here, can help identify many preparers by type of credential or qualification. When using a tax return preparer, taxpayers should look for a preparer who is available year round in case questions come up after filing season is over. So if your tax preparer is skipping town after tax return season is up, I mean, if they're coming back, that's one thing. But if you're like, oh, they're going to disappear forever. I've never seen them before. And now they're here and then they're going to disappear. That's not good because even if your tax return clears, it still could be audited, you know, at least three years or more if there's something fraudulent possibly into the future. So ask about uh, service fees. Taxpayers should avoid tax return preparers who base their fees on a percent of the refund or who offer a deposit all or part of the refund into their own financial accounts. So again, if a tax return preparer is advertising, I get you a better refund than anyone. They're, you can tell they're not advertising. I do the tax return right getting you the best refund in accordance with the law they've kind of skipped part of that part and they're just going to give you a big refund that seems like well that sounds like you're going to do something that 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 taking positions that wouldn't be a justifiable type of positions that's a little bit scary of course so you kind of want to you know avoid that because you are the one on the hook and even if they take that position even if they say hey look these other people i took i did this and they already got their refund like right now it's they still could get audited, right? It's like that's like that's like saying that that someone was speeding at 100 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour freeway and totally look, the guy just did it right there. There's no problem. Yeah, but if he gets a ticket, it's going to cost him a lot. That's that's kind of how the law kind of works, right? They're not going to catch everyone, but if if and when they do catch you, the penalty is going to be high enough that it hurts, right? That's kind of that's kind of that's what the law's trying to basically do. So ensure their preparer offers IRS e-file. The IRS issues most refunds in fewer than 21 days for taxpayers who file electronically and choose direct deposit. So they are of course trying to enforce or get people to file electronically and use the direct deposit thing. Provide records and receipts. Good preparers ask to see these documents. So you could prepare a tax return based on just what you tell them but obviously it would it would be a lot more likely for the return to be accurate if they have all your documentation like the w-2s and the 1099s and so on and so forth if they don't and the information is inaccurate the return will most likely have a have a stop or get get process delayed or something understand the preparer's credentials and qualifications and review their history for complaints or discrepant uh, disciplinary actions so obviously you can you can look at their credentialed agents so if they're an, if they're a CPA are they a current CPA if they're an attorney are they a current attorney if they're an enrolled agent are they a current enrolled agent and then of course you've got all the other things you can look at like Yelp and all the other kind of stuff that's the kind of stuff that's a little bit more difficult to to pull from because you know you've again you've got a lot of weird people that you know if you get mad at someone and you just review bomb them or something which happens all the time unfortunately so, so i don't really know but at least you can at least you so the, but i think those i think those other resources are getting better too because because well hopefully but in any case at least you got the credentialing thing so never sign a blank or incomplete return taxpayers are responsible for for filing a complete and a correct tax return so so you know if they give you a blank page and tell you to sign a blank tax return that is a, that's not a good sign. You, they have to complete the tax return before you sign it. Right? Review their tax return before signing it and ask questions if something is not clear 
or appears inaccurate. This is often something difficult for a lot of taxpayers because they feel uh, justifiably anybody would feel like, I don't really know what I'm talking about. You know, the, that's why I hired somebody. But, but you can get a general idea, of course, on what the tax return is doing. And so don't feel uh, bad asking basic, what might seem basic questions to you about the tax return, because you know, that's just the way it is. You're paying for someone to, to help you to prepare the tax return and help you to understand what it is you're, you're preparing. And so you asking questions is, is part of that process. Make sure any refund will go directly to the taxpayer's bank account, not into the preparer's bank account. So if they're taking part of your refund that's coming directly from the IRS as part of payment or something, that shouldn't be happening. Taxpayers should review the routing and bank account number on the com completed tax return and make sure it's accurate, meaning it's going to your bank account. Ghost tax preparers warning signs. By law, anyone who is paid to prepare or assist in preparing federal tax returns must have a valid preparer tax identification number. There's a link to that here. Paid preparers must sign and include their PTIN on any tax return they prepare. Not signing a return is a red flag that the paid preparer may be looking to make a quick profit by promising a big refund or charging fees based on the size of the refund. So again, a lot of times if you were to be a scamming tax preparer, you would say they would often argue that they can get a bigger refund than others. And then in order to not be on the hook, they try, they're going to not put their own, they're not going to sign the tax return as the paid preparer. Now, because even if they do sign the tax return as a paid preparer, remember that that does not mean that you are not on the hook because the IRS is still going to come after you. But the IRS does know that, that who the paid preparer is as well. And if, and if they're doing something fraudulent or something, they, they may take action on that. But that's not going to fix your problem if your tax return was wrong. If they don't put their information on the tax return as the paid tax preparer, and they are a paid tax preparer, that's a big sign that, they're, that they, they don't even support what it is they put on the tax return because they're not willing to put the skin in the game, right? They're not willing to put their name on the, on the return. And so that's not good. Taxpayers should avoid these unethical ghost tax return preparers. How to prepare, how to report a preparer misconduct. Taxpayers can report preparer misconduct to the IRS using form 14157 complaint. So there's a nice complaint form here if you want to complain. Tax return preparer. If a taxpayer uh, suspects a tax return preparer filed or charged their tax return without their consent, they should file form 14157A, tax return preparer fraud or misconduct affidavit. Both these forms are available on the make a complaint about a tax return preparer page of irs.gov, irs.gov, irs.gov. And there's links to that here, links to all the other stuff. There'll be a link to this in the description.